Hey guys, how's it going? I am WWE Hall of Famer Lita, welcoming you to General Admission Rattling. It's obvious why the mob is out here first tonight. Your world champion, Alistair Black, got his chest caved in by a giant Austrian brute while I sent that insect CM Punk back to the high school gyms he belongs in. And Bobby Lashley became the most dominant intercontinental champion in three years. What you are witnessing is the birth of a new super group. More dangerous than Alpha, more dominant than the Blade Runners. I want to take you back to when I ended CM Punk at Bash. Look at me powerbomb this jack off in the next June. I could have done anything in that moment, but I chose to end CM Punk's career. And of course, we have Bobby Lashley. He didn't need my help to make his seventh consecutive defense of the Intercontinental title. And look at this, Lashley walking right up to a legend and making him shit his pants. I know Rey Mysterio looks like he's the size of a toddler, but this is a bit on the nose. I've been in your position before, Bandito. I know you think you can take me down. You can't. I will break you in half in the middle of this ring, and I'll make sure Ray has to watch from a hospital bed. I hope you're all watching. You're seeing history being made in real time. That's all I've ever done. And I came to GAW to do it again. Well, thank you to Conor McGregor. Always love hearing from him. I'll tell you what we can see coming up next. We will see Walter in action. The man who challenged Aleister Black for the world title at Bash of the Beach and gave us this hideous scene as Walter attacked a referee in the middle of the match. Walter will be in action later on today, but let's get you on to our first match. Charlotte Flair taking on former U.S. champion Tegan Knox. Well, here's the thing about Charlotte Flair. As we've said many times, Flair is just looking to get to the level that she feels like she should be at right now. And this would be quite a way to do it, beating a former US champion. Flair is, uh, has not had kind of the, the, the run that she would have expected. One in three so far in season two, but that most recent match is a win on GAW Dark just this past Wednesday. She took down Jessamine Duke. She did it with the natural selection, a move that she's been using more and more as the figure eight begins to be scouted by her opponents. So for Flair, she at least has started uh, her post bash at the beach life on a high note with that win. So let's see if she can continue that as she continues her quest for her first title in GAW. Some sarcastic cheers for Tegan Knox, the woman who lost her US championship at Bash at the Beach and seemed just absolutely dejected after that. So for Knox, uh, where does she go from here? You know, we're taking a look back and Bianca Belair was simply the better wrestler at Bash at the Beach. It feels like a lifetime ago, but Bianca Belair with the KOD, the kiss of death, was the kiss that sealed the end of Tegan Knox's US championship reign. Knox had held that title since she uh, illegitimately, in my opinion, beat Casey Catanzaro for it back in season one. And the record books will show that Tegan Knox had just two successful defenses, 173 days as champ. Let's see what she can do after losing that belt. And let's see what Charlotte Flair can do Bianca Belair shocked a lot of people when she won that, and you can see no Dakota Kai either. Conspicuous by her absence is the women's world champion. 
The woman who walked out of Bash at the Beach by the skin of her teeth with the help of Tegan Knox. Cover from Knox and a kick out. Knox's two title defenses came over Casey Catanzaro in a match where Dakota Kai also got involved and Rosita. And then going into Bash at the Beach, she of course lost to Bianca Belair. So in the history of the US title so far, Tegan Knox does have the longest reign, but just two successful defenses compared to Ronda Rousey's six in just 104 days. Charlotte Flair looking for that leg. Flair was one of the victims of Ronda Rousey's US title run. Back on Storm in August of last year, Charlotte Flair challenged for the belt, came up just short. Tegan Knox with a curb stomp. So maybe this is Tegan Knox getting off onto the right foot here. Maybe going on a quest to regain her U.S. championship. Her team kick teammate Dakota Kai holds the world championship. So maybe Knox is more focused elsewhere. Charlotte Flair effortless strength for the Exploder. Charlotte Flair is one of the best female athletes on the planet. Certainly one of the most polished female wrestlers. And you can say that that's because of her pedigree. And partly it is. But I think a big part of it has to go, has to be chalked up to her work ethic, what she's been able to do. Tegan Knox looking for the choke slam. They call her Lady Kane and Charlotte Flair able to free herself, transitions into the front chancery, and again goes for that leg. Now we said Charlotte Flair has been using the natural selection a lot more as she feels like the figure eight has not been getting the job done, but maybe we're seeing a change in her mindset here. Maybe she'll go back to the deadly figure eight submission. We'll have to see. Because at some point you gotta think the natural selection will end up being more heavily scouted. Flair comes in, what a lariat. Up to her feet goes Knox, and now Charlotte Flair comes in, what a spear. Absolutely drives Tegan Knox ribs first into the ground. And now Flair, different submission as Charlotte Flair goes for a single leg camel clutch. She's got the knee pressing down on the upper back of Tegan Knox, and Knox able to free herself. Knox tries to come back. Nice takedown to answer from Flair. You can feel that Charlotte Flair feels like she's got the momentum here, but Tegan Knox catches that boot. Rising knee strike, and Charlotte Flair answers back. Flair, what a chop. Tegan Knox wears the brace on that knee and she used it right there. Knox has undergone multiple knee surgeries in her career. And we know that Charlotte Flair is not above targeting her opponent's weakness. Tegan Knox just like a limp fish after that heavy shot from Flair and now Flair we see her making uh, heavy use of that figure four head scissors. Leg hooked here from Flair and a kick out from the former U.S. champ. And we talk about the history of the U.S. champ. If you've been here with us on General Admission Wrestling for the last eight months since July of 2020, then you've seen the entire history of the U.S. title. But if you haven't been with us for that long, head on over to our website, generaladmissionwrestling.com, and you can read up on the full history. You can see our chart of all champions, not just in the U.S. title picture, but in every championship, dating all the way back to 2005. Tegan Knox, beautiful athleticism. You'll also find the links to our Discord server as well as our specialized Spotify playlist. Tegan Knox, shiniest wizard. And just like that, Tegan Knox, I believe, has her first win. No! Charlotte Flair kicks out of the shiniest wizard. Tegan Knox can't believe it. Charlotte Flair, she, we know she's got that confidence. She's probably sitting there going, yep, I knew what I was gonna do in that situation. That's one of the things that makes Charlotte Flair so special. And again, Flair comes in, what a spear. You can see the force she puts behind that, just driving her shoulder into the ribs and taking her all the way down. And now Flair, boot to the gut. Charlotte Flair from behind. Natural selection. The move that has become the kill shot 
in Charlotte Flair's arsenal as of late. Leg hooked on the former champion, Charlotte Flair has upset the former U.S. champion. What a win for Charlotte Flair. And maybe that shows you there's a little bit of the changing of the guard when it comes to who's going to be competing for that U.S. title. For the last number of months, since October of 2020, or really since September of 2020, we have seen Casey Catanzaro, Tegan Knox. They have been really the two biggest names. But now we've got Charlotte Flair, Bianca Belair. Maybe there are new names here in the U.S. championship picture. Folks, I got some breaking news. We got to go backstage right now. This is a photo unearthed, and the timestamp says that it was mere minutes ago. This is what appears to be Ronda Rousey, and I, I, I think that's, T, that's Dakota Kai. I think that's Dakota Kai. She kind of has her back turned, but the women's world champion, I believe that's her. I am getting confirmation Dakota Kai is nowhere in the building, and in fact, her car was seen leaving just moments ago. So maybe we've got a developing story here as Dakota Kai and Ronda Rousey seem to not be done. We'll keep you updated on that story. Folks, coming up in our main event, it's a huge match. Switchblade Jay White, former challenger for the World Championship around this time last year. He's got a match against a mystery opponent. It has not been revealed to anyone. And after an incredible week of debuts featuring Boleska Pierce, Ramon Gutierrez, and Derek Cole, what could we be in store for here on Friday Night Storm? That is coming up in our main event. TMDK are met here. Shane Thorne and Nick Miller came up short in their title challenge against the Usos at Bash at the Beach. It was a different Usos than we're used to seeing as Jimmy and Jay came out with that fire that we hadn't seen from them in some time. And TMDK were just wiped out by Jimmy and Jay Uso. So Shane Thorne and Nick Miller seem to be in relatively high spirits as they uh, will see what happens as they continue their quest for tag team gold. The reinvented team was the hottest team in the world for some time. So we'll see what they do now. Now, British Strong Style do have a history in GAW, but unfortunately, their recent history has not been too kind to them. Pete Dunne is a former tag team champion in GAW. He famously won it with Drew McIntyre when the two were randomly paired during the uh, during Winterfest in 20. Uh, that would have been the 2016 Winterfest, I believe. They were paired up. They decided to make a permanent team. They became tag team champions at Nitro 6 in 2017. So Pete Dunn does have a history in GAW, but unfortunately not with Tyler Bate, not as part of British Strong Style. Now we've seen them in this, uh, in this season of general admission wrestling kind of go... Uh, it's a little bit, it's been a little bit up and down for them uh, in season one, but in, in season two, it's uh, been a little bit, a little bit better. A loss to Jay White and Drew McIntyre, but a win on Dark over the Lucha Brothers. So it's a pretty up and down year for British Strong Style. This would be a great way to uh, get themselves back into that up category with a win over the team that challenged the Usos at Bash at the Beach. And we just saw what Charlotte Flair did. We just saw that you can beat someone coming off of a tough loss at Bash. That's exactly what British Strong Style aimed to do here. Tyler Bate in to start for British Strong Style. Shane Thorne in for TMDK. Not two weeks ago, TMDK was challenging for the Tag Team Championships. And now here they are, Shane Thorne with a standing moonsault. And as we've just seen 
in the case of Charlotte Flair, you know, you can take advantage against uh, against an individual or a team that's coming off a tough loss at Bash at the Beach. Charlotte Flair just did it. We'll see if British Strong Style can do the same. Tag in. Here comes Pete Dunn. Tyler Bate has Shane Thorne up top. And the two just firing away with those shots to the abdomen of Shane Thorne. Dunn has that history in tag team wrestling. Former champion, teamed with Drew McIntyre. So he does have experience here. And when it comes to, you know, British Strong Style, what they've been able to do, they, they split time between GAW and, uh, and wrestling promotions across Europe, including their native United Kingdom. And it's amazing to see how different they are in terms of success when it comes to those promotions. Both of these men have held singles and tag gold aplenty in various promotions across their home continent. What a lariat unleashed by Shane Thorne. Sometimes a change of scenery is all you need to really wake up and, uh, and enjoy some of that success. You know, we've seen it. It's been a, uh, a, a, a truth that a lot of wrestlers have had to square with that sometimes the style, sometimes the scenery, uh, it just does you better in certain places. Going all the way back in the long history of wrestling to men like, uh, like Bruiser Brody, Stan Hansen, who, of course, enjoyed incredible careers in Japan, the Road Warriors. You know, sometimes that change of scenery is all you need. And TMDK is a good example of it the other way. Camel Clutch applied here from Shane Thorne, wrenching back on Tyler Bate, and Bate so strong, especially for his size. TMDK is a great example of the reverse when it comes to doing that. You know, TMDK in their home continent of Australia won basically everything there is to win over there in terms of tag team success. And, uh, and they come over here to the U.S. and they haven't enjoyed the same level of, uh, of dominance that we've seen from them. So it's really just been in the last few months that TMDK has really... Uh, you know, gotten back to the level that they feel like they should be at. And they've been here for a few years. So again, when you change scenery in something like this, in general admission wrestling, in this sport where the margins are so thin, the difference between winning and losing is such a fine line. Sometimes that change of scenery is all that it takes to make that difference. TMDK has learned that in British Strong Style. They need to learn it as well. Shane Thorne near his own corner, and Tyler Bate not going to let him make a tag. This is a little bit of a slower match. Wrestled by TMDK, and now Tyler Bate. Look at the strength. Deadlift German. I think TMDK feel like they were a little bit too aggressive against the Usos, played too much of their game. And TMDK now... They're probably thinking, we need to change. Massive lariat from Shane Thorne. Pete Dunn in, and Thorne gets himself the win as Nick Miller stops Pete Dunn from breaking the cover up. And Shane Thorne, what a massive lariat delivered to Tyler Bate. I wasn't ready for it. You weren't ready for it. TMDK. They are ready to once again challenge for the Tag Team Championships. I'm sure... That's where their focus is. What a lariat by Shane Thorne. Looks like he could throw a 90 mile an hour fastball with that one. And Pete Dunn can't get past the wall of Nick Miller to break that up. TMDK has once again put themselves in position to potentially challenge the Usos. We'll see what their plan is going forward. We told you that Walter is in action after his heinous actions at Bash at the Beach. Let's take a look back at, uh, at what Walter did at Bash and how he plans to move forward. And Walter, Walter doesn't like it. He goes back to the referee. I attack an official 
because in that moment I knew he would not give me a fair opportunity. They brought me to GAW so my fans would come with me and then they hoped I'd never be in this position. When I was, they had to stop me. It was their only option. In that moment, I didn't care if I was disqualified or not. The match should have been over anyway. I will come back for Aleister Black, for the title he and GAW stole from me. And this time, I will break him. an ungrateful conniving excuse maker that he would attack an official the way that he did and you can hear how the fans will react to him now and if you're any official stepping in with Walter I mean you're thinking who's next you know what could he do uh, it is uh it's disappointing because Walter is such an incredible wrestler and to think that you know he'd take the attitude that he's been held back in GAW I, I think is absurd you get what you earn in general admission wrestling and Walter just hasn't earned a world title yet one of the great intercontinental champions of all time but you know he's just not at that level yet and apparently he doesn't see it that way Let's see the way Sin Cara sees stepping into the ring with Walter right now. And Walter just hucks him over the top. I told you, Walter, one of the great Intercontinental Champions, three-time Intercontinental Champion. His third reign came in 2015. He held the belt for 606 days. His 16 defenses, most of any Intercontinental Champion of all time. So for Walter to sit here and act like he is, is owed something is profoundly insulting to his history in general admission wrestling. Sin Cara, meanwhile, his GAW career has not reached the same heights that we've seen from someone like Walter. But anything can change at any time for the masked man. And you know that Sin Cara is concerned about what Walter might do after we saw him fly off the handle at Bash. Into the corner goes Walter. And Sin Cara now coming in, knee right to the gut. Walter draped over that top, that bottom rope, and Sin Cara. Leg drop, guillotine. You gotta turn up the pace against Walter, try to kill him with the athleticism, and it seems like that's what Sin Cara is doing. Elbow drop, Walter out of the way. You gotta at least give it up to Walter. His incredible vision, his incredible knowledge of professional wrestling, and Walter going up top. What the hell is he doing? Walter from the top drops the knee on the face of Sin Cara. That's something we saw him try to do against Aleister Black and it didn't get the job done. It's what elicited his heinous attack on the referee. Back into the corner he goes. Sin Cara somehow has recovered from getting the knee of a 300 pounder driven into his throat. Sin Cara still trying to work here as Walter into the ropes and Sin Cara neck breaker combination. Walter has Two of the three Intercontinental Championship reigns with the most defenses. Of course, as I mentioned, his third reign, 16 defenses is the most by a long shot. In second place is Drew McIntyre's 322-day reign in 2019, where he had 10. Sin Cara looking for a springboard drop kick. Walter out of the way. 
Walter looking again to punish Sin Cara with those chops that we saw him use so well against Black. And Sin Cara going to give him a receipt. That one's for Alistair Black, baby. And now Sin Cara, the go behind, and Sin Cara trying to use a sleeper hold on Walter. I don't think that's too smart of a strategy. Walter frees himself, and Sin Cara may be regretting trying to beat Walter at his own game. Walter's second defense, his second reign as Intercontinental Champion, came in 2013. 189 days, he defended it nine times. That's the third most all time. If you want to see any of our championship histories, Intercontinental and otherwise, you can head on over right now to our website, generaladmissionwrestling.com. You can see full histories of all of our championships. And they date back all the way to 2005. You want to know the first ever Intercontinental Champion? It happened in 2010 at Torrential Downpour. AJ Styles in a ladder match defeated former world champion Sugar Shane Helms, Chavo Guerrero, Roderick Strong, and Chris Sabin. One of the great matches, and maybe we'll get the opportunity to show it to you. Walter, what a massive lariat. And it's fitting, isn't it, that that's what's going to do the job for, whoa, no. Sin Cara kicks out. That meat hook of a lariat. He tried to use two of them to beat Aleister Black. One of them didn't get the job done, and here comes the second. That's the second one that did not connect against Aleister Black. It does here, and Walter has a win. You can hear the fans are not happy, and I wouldn't be either. After what Walter did, his despicable actions, taken at Bash at the Beach. That one lariat right there, he thought it was enough. Sin Cara showed a little bit of extra fire. One was not enough to do the job against Alistair Black, but that second one was enough against Sin Cara. Of course, that second one was the one that Alistair Black ducked and retaliated with a black mass. And that's how Walter lost his opportunity at a world title. So maybe that is weighing heavily on his mind here. Walter, a conflicted man, and at this point, I think you can say a bad man. Coming up next is going to be our main event, Jay White against a mystery opponent, but first TMDK backstage, I'm told they're addressing exactly what we all wanted to hear them talk about, the Usos. Who the hell knew the Usos would come out the way they did? Those bastards tricked us. They made us believe they were these childish soft fools who were just happy to be here. They lied. Yes, they did. But now we know their dirty tricks and we won't let them fool us again. Usos, we are coming for the tag team titles you stole from us and we will not let you fool us again. This time, we won't give you a chance. I saw what Walter said, and it makes me sick. I work with our group of officials on a daily basis. It's a fantastic group of hardworking men just out to make a paycheck like the rest of us. Walter used one of them as a prop to make a point about something he thinks he deserves, but he has never had the ability to earn that. It's just like Walter to use the people around him. He's been doing it his whole career, but he had to do it on the biggest stage in front of our biggest audience. One man can put the name of G.A.W. in the mud with one heinous act, and Walter almost did that. I will not let that go. I am coming for Walter to teach him what happens when he takes another man's career for granted. You know what? Good for Cody Rhodes. Good for Cody Rhodes. That, of course, was not planned. I didn't know that Rhodes would be here, but Rhodes saying what all of us believe about Walter. And I hope that Rhodes does find the big man and teaches him a lesson. Rhodes has been on the precipice for so long of achieving 
gold in uh, in GAW, and he just has fallen short at each opportunity. But this really gives him the opportunity of a lifetime in GAW to potentially beat one of the great Intercontinental Champions in the history of this company, as well as a man who just challenged for the World Championship at Bash at the Beach. Coming up now is Jay White. And I will tell you what, man, Jay White, he looks like he would rather be anywhere else. I don't know if, uh, if he just is not fond of facing a mystery opponent or if he's, you know, more involved in his tag team now with Drew McIntyre, who, by the way, conspicuous by his absence is Drew McIntyre. Where, where is the Scotsman? This is his tag team partner, Jay White, facing an unknown opponent. Now, White, we know, former challenger for the world championship, challenged Samoa Joe for the belt when Joe was the champion to begin season one. And Joe, one of the great world champions, I think, in the history of this company, one of the great championship reigns, rather. So Jay White came up short in all his challenges there, but who will be the mystery man? Unbelievable. Martinez, a man who has been wrestling for 15 years, a veteran in this sport. We saw him most recently over in WWE NXT, former North American champion there. Of course, a reign as the Ring of Honor TV champion. He has been all over the world. He has excelled in every promotion he's been in. Damian Martinez is here to challenge Day Jay White. Martinez making his debut in GAW. And I'll tell you what, this, this has been an incredible week of debuts and Damian Martinez, what a way to cap it off here. I am so happy to see Damian Martinez out here against Jay White. And immediately Martinez with a side slam. Martinez is trained in martial arts, so he brings that styling on top of just an incredibly punishing offense. Very strike-based, very slam-based, and apparently very turnbuckle-based. Introducing Jay White to that top turnbuckle. I hope you're saying it at home. Damian Martinez, unbelievable to see him here. A long career in professional wrestling. Martinez with a deadlift powerbomb. And first cover of the match to Jay White. Martinez made his debut in pro wrestling all the way back in 2005. Took several years off, came back with a vengeance in 2012, and that's really when his uh, his true professional career kicked off, which of course culminated in him joining Ring of Honor, where he was the television champion, fought in New Japan, he fought all over the world, and then of course joining WWE NXT, where he was the North American champion there, and now here he is in general admission wrestling. Can you believe it? And here he is taking it to Jay White. White to his feet and Damian Martinez coming off looking for that spinning heel kick. Jay White sends him down and that's one way to stop the big man. But Martinez, the adrenaline just coursing through his veins, cannot be stopped. Jay White sends him back in and maybe for White you're thinking taking the jacket off right now. White catches him with a hip toss. White, first cover here, grinding the forearm into the jaw. Martinez kicks out. What is Martinez's purpose here? What does he want to do right now? That is going to be the question, but Jay White catches him with that elbow. I do question what Martinez's plan might be. Jay White now 
surreptitiously taking the pad off of the turnbuckle he was just introduced two moments ago. Irish whip into the corner, goes Martinez and Jay White maybe thinking that turnbuckle is more of a uh, more of an insurance policy than anything else. Martinez shoves him away. The incredible strength from the man who stands at six foot seven. Chop misses and Jay White comes back, forearm. And White going back to that turnbuckle. Two turnbuckle pads removed and White, you can tell he's done it before. White sends Martinez in and Martinez back first into the hard metal of that turnbuckle. Jay White knew what he was doing. And now White going to work on the six foot seven monster. Martinez though, coming back. Damian Martinez, he does not want to mess up in his first match in GAW. Jay White comes back, knee down low. Referee might want to check that, snap suplex. I don't know if the referee has even noticed that these turnbuckle pads are off. Jay White did it so quickly. Referee was checking on Damian. Into the front chance where he goes White, maybe looking to set up a guillotine choke, and Martinez wards it off. White, Irish whip into the corner, goes Martinez, and White comes in, really loaded up for that lariat. But you can see the offense that White has had to put in to try to keep Martinez down has taken a lot out of him here. And now Jay White, Blade Runner, but the referee has his back turned. Jay White, Jay White hurt himself. Referee finally comes over to make the cover. White with the leg hooked, and Martinez kicks out. Jay White hurt himself. He took that turnbuckle pad off, slammed Damian Martinez into it, and now this is what you get. Martinez with a lariat. This is what you get, Jay White. You reap what you sow. And finally, the referee has noticed a turnbuckle pad is off. Back into the ring they go, and now it's Martinez, front chancery in, and Martinez looking for a neck breaker, and instead just rockets Jay White. Rocks him with that boot. Martinez, what a run! Damian Martinez, he might just do it. Hang on, what? Drew McIntyre. I said he was conspicuous by his absence. And here comes McIntyre. McIntyre to the ring, Claymore. Claymore, McIntyre got this match thrown out. McIntyre intentionally got this match thrown out. And now McIntyre intentionally throws Damian Martinez out of the ring. White and McIntyre celebrate over the body of Martinez. As Drew McIntyre, what a despicable action to intentionally intentionally get a disqualification. And now McIntyre and White, you can see how much they respect Damian Martinez because they're trying to make sure he never gets up again. Absolutely disgusting behavior from Drew McIntyre and Jay White. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Folks, we will try to get this thing sorted and I hope that Drew McIntyre gets a long suspension after causing a disqualification like this. Unbelievable. Folks, subscribe so you can see what is going to happen in the future regarding all of this. And of course, we got Academy Storm Chaser coming up on Monday. Thank you so much. We appreciate you.